about a decade now since you were the last part of an X-Men creation. You did X-Men 2 back in 2003. So what was your first reaction when you got the call that you'd be working with Brian Singer once again? <laughs> well, it wasn't the call. We were actually in the ed editing room um, oh. doing Jack the Giant Slayer, and uh, I guess Brian heard the news that uh, Matthew was Vaughn was dropping out, and um, and so I kind of saw the writing on the wall that it was a storm coming for me. <laughs> <laughs> and and what was my reaction? My reaction was was of course, well, it's always a double reaction for me. First, it's I, I feel overwhelmed already before we even start, and um, I already was finishing two years on Jack, but also um, exciting because it's X Men, and I always fancy those uh, that time during X Men Two as being a uh, as being a great experience for me both. It was both exciting because it was uh, a world that I, I was thrilled to be in, and um, and also because it was my first really big project to take on, and um, and it also just went very smoothly. There was very little interference from the studio, and I just I just recall it being uh, a good experience. Were there any memories that stood out to you uh, in particular? Well, many, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember one moment in particular when we had a internal test screening, hmm. and. The, the chairman at the time, Tom Rothman, stood up in front of the uh, in front of the theater and said, "You know, I'm concerned about this being just massively confusing. I think the audience is going to not understand anything." And and um, his 11 year old daughter stood up next to him and said, "Oh, Daddy, everything is clear." And then she proceeded to explain all the intricacies of the alternate realities in the film and and every single nuance. And um, and he just sat back down and, and I realized that she saved us. <laughs> and it's really amazing. It's 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 how an eleven year old girl saved that movie from going down a road, a path of, of absolute needless um, studio tinkering. And <laughs> I often wish we had an eleven year old girl on this last one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get any for this new one? <laughs> <clears throat> we had some young kids, and thank God for young kids because I swear to God, when we're ready to go down um, into you know when the ship is ready to go into. Uh, the wrong doc, and a little kid comes up and saves us, yeah. I mean, they, they understand way more than, than the adults do. <laughs> they do, serious. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> so now, going back, back in time a little bit, uh, one of your first collaborations with Brian was back in Lion's Den, if I'm correct, in 1988. And yes, it was. <laughs> that was, uh, I believe, Brian Singer's very first film, and you were the editor there at that time, so... I was, I was the editor and the co-director co on that. Oh. Uh, uh. Credited this time, but um, no, he. It's, he. Uh, the, what happened was, is he wanted to also uh, try to be like the next Woody Allen by acting in his own films, <laughs> and and he was so petrified and frozen when the cameras and lights ended up being around him that um, we had to go next door and get some Tanqueray gin and get him drunk <laughs> so that he could actually, you know, function and 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 quote unquote act. Um, so, and then, so because he was so drunk, I, you know, he basically wasn't as engaged as maybe he'd want to be as a director, so I ended up sort of co-directing it with him. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you guys before that had just met on Summer Rain, correct? That's correct. Yeah, that was a movie that I was, I was helping uh, a director, um, a, the director of the film was, was, a, was, a, um, was an associate of mine at, at USC. We'd taken a directing course together. And um, I was helping him out on the, uh, on the sound on the set one day, and Brian and I met. And then, as it ended up being, the editor was let go on the film, and the film was, was, I asked for the whole film to be disassembled. I didn't want to see it in the way it had been cut together, and I recut the whole thing and told a new, kind of a new story through the eyes of this little girl, uh, because the film was a period piece, so I could, I could have an old woman recount what was happening in the story. And Brian saw this and sort of remembered and, and then brought me on uh, to work with him on Lion's Den. Mm, interesting. Brian, because Brian mm -hmm. was the, the PA on the film, and mm -hmm. he had been on the film since day one, so he, he kind of saw um, the paths that it took. And at that time, you know, you were just starting with your editing uh, career, and how were you back then? Like, how, how would you rate your editing skills back then? Well, they sort of came naturally because it was, uh, you know, and editing has spawned out of, of filmmaking and being a filmmaker and a director, and, and uh, editing was a, was a byproduct of, um, of my basically making movies um, since I was a kid in Super 8 films and, you know, in elementary, well, not elementary school. No, when did I start? I started like in, uh, well, I guess it was it was junior high. And and then in my directing course at USC, I, I got accolades for how well scenes were, were edited and, and the performances were edited. So, so I, I just, I just, I did it as a default, but it wasn't something I was looking to go get into. 
then um, when I started working with Brian, I just inevitably fell into the, to the editing because he asked me to do it, and then I ended up editing films for people, but it really wasn't what I was looking to do, but that's how life is, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that actually leads to my next question now. Over the years, well, along with editing, you've done some composing for films, so... Right, and, that, and that, that's mm -hmm. another example of how you end up going to the place you least expect to be going in life, because uh, I was a film score geek, and all I listened to was film music and classical music as a kid, and, and I was a geek, period. But um, And then uh, when Brian and I were doing our first feature film, public access, um, the composer um, dropped out at the last hour, and we had a Sundance deadline, so I scored the movie, as I, and, and I had been doing that as a hobby, and then, of course, the rest is history. Uh, the, uh, the people sort of singled out the music and the editing and realized it was from the same guy, and then when we, when we put the usual suspects together, um, I just wanted to score the movie, but Brian insisted that there was no way I wasn't going to edit it, so mm. the same blackmail continues to this day. And I've always wanted to ask this question to um, the editors and composers. Um, is one harder than the other? and also which one is your favorite uh, not to belittle my my composing brethren who go through absolute hell on earth on a film as a composer but I would say the editing is easily far more demanding because it, first of all it bans the, the, the journey of the entire movie you're on from the beginning all the way through the bitter end mm. and and a composer at least can get in and out of a movie in a couple months mm. um, so, so the the, uh, the intensity is, 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 is furious but at least it's short <laughs> <laughs> with the editor, the, it never ends. And also an editor, and depending on the, the, the relationship the editor has with the director, in, my, in this case, Brian gives me a, quite a bit of authority, and with that comes the more, more pressure to, to hold the movie together. It, there's just a rat's nest of loose ends that an editor has to, has to constantly deal with from every facet, whether it's the music or ADRing the actors or visual effects problems or storyboarding sequences, uh, coming up with pre-visualizations that you're going to shoot and working with the previs artists. And, I mean, so, uh, editing is a lot more than some person sitting at a computer and and, and basically uh, making scenes work. It's, it's just, uh, I always liken it to people who don't know what a film editor does. I just say, well, imagine the editor of a newspaper or a magazine, basically that kind of responsibility. I would say uh, the editing is far more demanding, and I would say I enjoy composing because I can be in and out, and um, you can change it up, too. You can go from one genre to a next and, and maybe do three or four different genres in one year as opposed to being trapped on the same thing, you know. So now, going into this film with X-Men, um, this film has such a dark tone to it but also some moments of humor how do you determine what music can go with what scene do you go by the portrayal of the character or the environment that they're um that they're in in a scene well uh, nine times out of ten uh, the character guides me so i i have to i have to know what's going on with the character uh, and characters in the film and then I, I i often will write music to those characters before i even start writing the score so i have some well to draw from otherwise i would just be writing the score blindly and it'd be, i'd be lost in a fog if i didn't know from where I was coming from. Um, having said that, this one, unlike some of the others we did, um, think, I would think the environment really did inspire some of the score in terms of like being in the 70s and so forth because of the, uh, the time period I could use some analog synths and guitars and, and uh, electric piano and so forth. But nevertheless, I mean, pretty much the characters are what guide me. Hmm, interesting. And so when you're in the editing room and you got all the scenes placed in front of you, do you ever find yourself uh, just like stopping in awe of like the brilliance of the actors in a scene? Like, do you ever find yourself like, Wow, Ian McKellen is really doing it here. <laughs> um, I would say there are there are moments like that if someone is really, I mean, if an actor is just really, really uh, giving some phenomenal performance. But you know, uh, most times, you know, as good an actor is, the performances are very are created by the film editor. You know, I don't I, actually I shouldn't say that. It sounds like I'm belittling an actor. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> um, let me rephrase that. Well, I wouldn't even say that, but it's, but it's true. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I would say if there's actually a really super standout moment for an actor, of course I'll take notice. But 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 normally my, my I'm just looking at the bigger picture constantly, and and and, and I, I I'm a, a born worrywart, so all I'm doing is, is worrying about every single facet that's a, that's in front of me, and, and pretty much sort of like say, acknowledging like okay that's that's a good performance, okay next I'm gonna move on now and, and try to make sense of the scene, you know. Mm, interesting. All right, and one last question I got here. Out of all the films you worked on, Usual Suspects, X-Men 2, and Jack the Giant Slayer, uh, what was your favorite film that you worked on throughout your entire career? I mean, aside, you know, every film has, has parts that I'm super proud of, you know, like even Apt, an Apt Pupil, even though I wouldn't say that's our, my favorite movie that we've done, there are, there are some of my favorite filmmaking moments are in that film, so to speak. But I would say that overall, I would say... I would say Valkyrie was, was was my favorite. Even I mean, aside from the obvious one, which is Usual Suspects. So the, really, the question should be: aside from Usual Suspects, which is your favorite movie that we've done? I'd say Valkyrie because I think the story was so great, 
and uh, and the performances were terrific. And it's not a perfect movie. I always, and I was very proud of the work done in that film. Yeah, it's such an interesting time too. And yeah, no, that film was definitely edited well. So you know, great job to you, man. Thanks.